all those different circumstances lead me to a place where I'm thinking I've got to take the plunge and I've got to take whatever the risk is involved. I've got to be willing to take this risk that is uh, we figure out the real estate business together. Part of why I'm even interested, I was interested in like coaching and teaching was the value you could bring to the lives of the individuals you're involved with, right? Totally different. I still get it from this. We're able to help people with this huge investment with their oh, yeah. lives and buying and selling right, property. Right. It's like, so I yeah. still, I, I still have that, right. you know, that was really important to me to experience there. And then there's, so I immediately shift into this. I've got to figure out a way, I've got to figure out a way to make some money with the job that I have. But it's, it's, I know that hey, I want to, I want to have a big family. I want to, I want to adopt. I want to be able to do all these different things that are, I know whatever I want to do that I think is important someday. It's going it, to, I want more time to do it and I want more more money to be able to pour into whatever it is mm -hmm. but not knowing exactly what that is right but I know that I want those two things so it's like I get that you know I start working for a bank and um, it's a few years into that and it's just we've have we've had a couple kids and it's just I'm not gonna make uh, as much money as I would like to as quickly as I would like to yep. Yep. and there's you, Josh has started a real estate business and then Jeremy was on board working with him as well and I was so persuasive that was it right yeah yeah <laughs> no there was this sounded sounded promising might have overestimated a few things and and, and, under, <laughs> and underestimated a few others but I definitely felt all those different circumstances um, lead me to a place where I'm thinking I've got to take the plunge and I've got to take whatever the risk is involved. I've got to be willing to take this risk that is, uh, we figure out the real estate business together. So so I wound up, and for me, it's, it's actually been a really, like I, my identity, like I was always in that, like I was good in high school and stuff. Yeah. And so my identity, like a lot of that, it was hard to be, admit like I'm a college dropout, you know? So, oh, yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. I dropped out of college and- Failure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so I went and I got a job at Arvest as yeah. counting other people's money, um, yep. being a teller. You started to see how much money there was in the world. I'm just kidding. Oh, well, <laughs> and, well, I mean, it did. Like, that was really interesting because it did. Like, I got to talk to, I talked to so many people at Arvest, oh, a lot yeah, of different people. So and many some, different people. Some realtors, um, which, and they all told me it was really hard. And I think, I don't know, the ones that I met, like, looking back on it, like, eh. I mean, well, it is hard, but it, they were just wrong, like, in the, the takes and stuff. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> or just like the victim mentality yeah. stuff and that sort of thing. And then while I was at, at Arvest, I was constantly trying to work on trying to find some sort of career or side hustles thing like that. So I think I like dabbled in like wedding photography and different kinds of photography oh, yeah. for a time. Didn't there. you start like buying stuff from China and selling it or what? Like, I did, I did, I did some like, yeah, I had an, a website where we sold band type stuff, and Danielle did that Zelda, too. Oh, that's Zelda, cool. and Harry Potter, and oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I that was that. a cherry yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, That was even like while we were in real estate. That's yeah, that what I was just thinking. Yeah, that was just like I remember yeah. when I started. That was still happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it, was, and it was supposed to be like there was like a team. Like yeah, we didn't realize how much work it takes. To like for one, to have, for Danielle to raise children, yeah. and for two, for me to sell real estate. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's like one of those things like she would do that and I do that. It's like actually it is a full time job raising children. Like that's real. Um, so much more than a full time job. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, she works <laughs> way harder than I do. She just does. But there was like this I didn't have any upward mobility at our best. I mean it's some of it I thought I was gonna be going to do with something anyways and so I wasn't yeah. trying to advance there and then it's like, oh, this is something like there really isn't there's not a way to you get there and you sell as much as you sell and whatever you sell, you make, you know? Yep. Um, yep. And that was really, really appealing because that's not something you can find anywhere. Oh. I thought a lot about adoption, like, you know, yeah. for years about yeah. like really wanting to like take care of kids, like you didn't have a home and, and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I became aware of like how many, um, how many embryos are actually left over. Um, and an orphaned through a lot of the, the IVF, like in vitro fertilization, fertility type process. And so uh, as soon as I like heard about that, like my heart went out for these, these kids because 
you know, totally believe that they're humans made in the image of God who have every human right that you and I have uh, from the point of fertilization onward. And so just really uh, struck by like, we're talking about millions of children who are orphans stuck in a freezer that nobody knows about, nobody is coming for, nobody cares about. And how in the world do I do anything to help them? And so um, basically I started reverse engineering, like how would you get to a point where you were getting as many embryos as possible out of a freezer? So like the next step was like, okay, you'd have to build a business, like some kind of an, an embryo rescue clinic kind of thing in like this foundation kind of you know, like to yeah. like how do you build the infrastructure of medical personnel and people to actually get <laughs> yeah like all that and, and just like whoa yeah, okay right. that's a lot there because it's probably like a chain of these clinics you're like oh my gosh that's huge but you, then you don't have big ambitions here this, yeah this i know is, no no this is real like where i am trying to go with my life yeah and because then then you take one more step back on the chain and it's like so you have to know a lot of business, but you also have to have a lot of assets because who's really going to fund this starting out? Um, I don't know of anybody, so right. hey, maybe I just need to build the assets up myself. Well, yeah. what's the best way to build up assets? I already read the Kiyosaki, very much believed in real estate as a vehicle, you know, long-term apartment investing, like that type of stuff, yeah. you know, residential and apartment. Um, and, and so like had this kind of vision of like, okay, I've got to get to there. I can't learn business experimenting on this whole embryo clinic thing because I have to actually execute that thing. I can't like go try it and fail on the idea and screw it all up and like never get funding again kind of thing. So I knew I needed to start a business. The thing that made the most sense connected with the investing is a real estate business. So literally like that's gotcha. actually the chain, like the investing and the, the, the business know-how is the chain that like brought me to like, Okay, let's start selling houses. <laughs> yeah.